Hey guys, it's Josh with Apex Gun Parts, and today we're going to be talking about how to identify military AK-47 and 74 magazines. As we dive in, I'm going to have some images displaying, showing examples of the different magazines that we're working with to help you identify what kind of AK-47 or 74 magazine that you have. If you have any notes or things you've learned throughout your time collecting AK mags, feel free to drop them in the comments below, and we'll star our favorite ones so you guys can help each other figure out what kind of AK mags that you have. Now I'm going to walk you through on how to identify these magazines, and there are five main ways that we like to tell what kind of magazine we're dealing with. Number one is the caliber. Number two is the material type. Number three is the body of the magazine, or the way the magazine looks. Number four is the magazine markings. And number five, finish type, which really comes into play on steel AKM magazines. So I'm going to walk you through that, and hopefully by the end you should be able to tell what kind of AK magazines that you have. All right, so this video will be in two sections. The first section being AK-47, AKM magazines in 7.62 by 39. And the second section will be AK-74 magazines in 5.45 by 39. And we're trying to identify military surplus magazines here. We're not gonna be going over any of the new commercial stuff. So I'll put the timestamps down below in the description and you can click ahead and find exactly what you need. All right, so let's get started on AK-47 magazines. The quickest way to tell between the two calibers is the curvature of the magazine. So here I've got a AK-47 magazine and then an AK-74 magazine. You can see the 74 is a lot more straight. 47 has a lot more of a definitive curve on the front, so that's the quickest way to identify the difference in calibers. All right, so for AK-47 magazines, the first thing we're going to look at is the material that the magazine is made out of. More than likely, you're working with one of these steel body AK-47 magazines, which are by far the most common magazine out on the market. The second type might be one of these Bakelite military surplus magazines. More than likely, these are from Russia, but there are some out of China as well. You might also be looking at an aluminum magazine, which is most likely Russian, with that waffle pattern on the side, which you can see on the screen right now. And the last one we might be looking at is a polymer magazine. These are more modern magazines, and they are probably going to be either out of Bulgaria or Russia with the AK-100 series magazines. All right, so we'll start off first with the most obvious one, Russian steel AK-47 magazines. I'm going to be looking at the body, the markings, and the finish type. First thing to look at, for Russian steel AK magazines is whether it's a slab design or a standard rib design. The slab design is shown on the left and the rib design is shown on the right. The slab side design magazines are generally always Russian. The body of a Russian AK-47 steel magazine will have the standard spine on the back, unlike Chinese magazines. On the front locking lug here, you'll see deep weld marks that are very wide and very distinctive. It'll be easy to tell that they're there. There will also be weld marks on the top feed lips that are easy to tell that they're there, as well as the occasional weld marks on these side plates. On the spine, they have standard weld marks, and the feed tray will be standard as well. Once I've identified that they have weld marks, in the key places, I'll look for markings for Russian magazine. Russian magazines will generally always have markings on the spine, and occasionally they'll have Neshevitz marking on the side of the body, which are rare magazines and easy to tell. I'll put an image up on the screen of what that should look like. When I look at the spine of the magazine for Russian AK markings, you're going to want to look for a surplus of markings. There will be a bunch on Russian AK magazines, and the main one you're going to try to look for is the triangle Ishevitz marking, which is a triangle with an arrow in the middle, or the Russian Tula star marking, which is just a star. Sometimes these markings can be at the very edge of the spine, so they're not fully planted on the spine of the magazine. But what you're going to want to look for are those two main factory markings, as well as a bunch of other markings that may indicate that it's a Russian magazine. Sometimes they'll have wide bowls with a number in the middle, like for example, this one has an 88 in it, right next to the Ishevitz marking, as well as small other markings that are shapes with numbers inside them. Generally, Russian magazines will have shapes with numbers inside them as markings compared to just standalone letters or numbers. When I'm looking at a Russian AK magazine, the two main finish types I will see 
are bluing and painting. So let's review this Russian AK magazine. There are deep welds on the front hug and on the feed lips. There are lots of markings on the spine, and I located the Ashevitz marking on this particular magazine. And the finish type is blued. And all these things together tell me that this is a Russian AK magazine. Let's go to the next one. Next up, we have Romanian AK-47 magazines. We'll start with the body, as always. The first thing I'll look for in a Romanian AK-47 magazine is those deep, textured weld marks on the front lug. You should be able to run your finger and feel them. In addition, Romanian AK-47 magazines will have a standard spine, standard feed tray, standard base plate, and fiber of design on the bottom. Romanian AK-47 magazines generally always have deep and noticeable welds on the spine, on the side plate, on the feed ramp, and on the front lug. If you're looking at an AK-47 magazine and it is just covered in deep weld marks, you're probably looking at a Romanian AK-47 magazine. Romanian AK-47 magazines also have some markings on them. Generally, they'll be on the spine or on the bottom here, next to this five rib design. Generally, they are letters and numbers by themselves, no shapes. Though sometimes you may find a Romanian AK-47 magazine on the spine here. It is a triangle with an arrow pointing up. The way to differentiate this from a Russian magazine is the arrow on a Romanian symbol. The bottom tail of the arrow is actually attached to the bottom part of the triangle, and I'll show a photo on screen now on how to tell the difference. Romanian AK-47 magazines are generally blued or parkerized. They are generally not painted, but some have been painted. So I'm looking at a Romanian AK-47 magazine. I'm looking for really deep, definitive welds all over it, including on the spine, on the front locking lug is the main thing. Letters and numbers stamped lightly onto the spine in this front bottom plate, and a blued or parkerized finish. Next are Polish AK-47 magazines. Polish AK-47 magazines have standard AK body designs. They'll have a spine on the rear, standard feed tray, and five rib design on the bottom. Polish AK-47 magazines have very light weld marks on the front lug and on the spine. You can run your finger across them and you shouldn't be able to feel too much texture at all. On Polish AK-47 magazines, you can look at this rear rib, which will either go all the way to the top where the feed plate is, or it'll cut off at a 90 degree angle. Then I'll look at the markings for Polish AK mags. The main thing I'm gonna look for is if it's an earlier design one, is on the front near the five rib design, there will be a letter corresponded with the number, generally is S3, five, or seven. So if I pick up magazine and I see an S7 on the front or an S5, that tells me it is probably a Polish magazine. In addition, Polish magazines have a lot of markings on the spine. The markings on the spine are plentiful, just like the Russian magazines. However, the main one I always look for is the main factory logo. Polish magazines will not have Russian magazine logos on them, but will instead have a triangle with an 11 on there, indicating that it is Polish manufacturer. Polish AK-47 magazines can sometimes be mistaken for Bulgarian ones, and the main way to tell is if it has a black finish type, and you think it might be Bulgarian. Again, look at this back rib back here, and if it comes up and goes at a 45 degree angle or kind of a ramp, it is Bulgarian. If it goes straight to the top or comes off at a 90 degree angle, it is more than likely Polish. Polish AK magazine finish types are generally blued or painted. Polish AK mags also have a very superior fit and finish. If you pick one up and the stampings on the ribs look very crisp and it just looks like a very well constructed magazine, in addition to the other points we went through earlier, it might be a Polish AK mag. Next up are Hungarian AK-47 magazines. We'll start with the body. It has a standard spine, standard feed tray, and standard five rib pattern on the bottom. Hungarian magazines have very light weld marks on the front lug on the spine and on these side plates. They will not be deep, and when you rub your finger over them, you should not be able to feel them. They're very light. 
For the markings of a Hungarian magazine, they'll be on the spine. Generally, it's 0, 2, 2, 0, 2, lots of zeros and twos with Hungarian magazines. And occasionally, you'll get the symbol of what looks like a half moon with a face in it, and that also identifies it as a Hungarian magazine. The last thing I'll look at for a Hungarian magazine is the finish. One thing to know about Hungarian magazines is that the button on the bottom that removes the bottom retaining plate is almost always gray compared to the rest of the magazine. Hungarian magazines can be a matte black or a very glossy black finish, but again, on the bottom here, these buttons are always gray. Next up are Yugoslavian AK-47 magazines. And as always, we'll start with the body. Yugoslavian AK mags will have a spine on the back, like a standard AK magazine. On the bottom here, instead of the five rib design going horizontal, it'll have two ribs going all the way across. In addition, it'll have a non-standard feed ramp. On the back here, it should have a hump that goes across to the left side, and this enables the bolt carrier to be locked to the rear when the magazine is empty. When I'm looking at a Yugoslavian magazine, generally they will have no markings. The main thing that will distinguish it are the two ribs on the bottom and the feed tray. In addition, Yugoslavian magazines generally always have a blued finish. Next up is a Bulgarian AK-47 magazine. Bulgarian AK-47 magazines have a standard design. They have a spine on the back, standard feed tray, five rib pattern on the bottom. When you're looking at a Bulgarian AK-47 magazine, you can look at this back ridge right here. And generally on most other AK-47 magazines, they'll either go all the way to the top of this feed side plate, or they'll come off at a 90 degree angle. On Bulgarian magazines, they'll come off at a 45 degree angle, or they'll have like this weird ramp design. That's one way I can quickly tell if a magazine from the body is Bulgarian, then I'll look for markings on a Bulgarian AK-47 magazine. Bulgarian AK mags have markings on the spine. And these are circles that correspond with either a 10 or an E on the inside of a double circle. These markings are very light and sometimes fall off the edge of the spine, so you might have to catch it in the right light. Last thing, some Bulgarian AK-47 magazines are blued, but generally they will be painted sort of a matte black finish. Next up is East German AK-47 steel magazines, and we'll start with the body. East German steel magazines have a standard AK spine on the back, standard feet tray, and standard five rib on the bottom of the body. East German magazines also have an excess of weld marks on the spine, which are all consistent pattern and size. These weld marks will be more than a standard AK magazine. After I look at the body of an East German magazine, I'll look for markings. Generally, on an East German magazine, there will be markings on the spine, and they are just letters. This could be A, B, C, J, K, L. They are large letters, they are not small, and they should take up most of the height of the spine. The last thing I'll look for in an East German magazine is the finish type. East German magazines are generally always blue. East German magazines are hard to identify, but the main thing that sets them apart from other magazines is the general fit and finish of the magazine. They're blued, everything is really nicely done, and with the letters in the back, you can just tell the quality of an East German AK-47 magazine by looking at it. Next up are Chinese AK-47 steel magazines. The easiest way to tell if a magazine is Chinese is a lot of them will not have this rear spine on the rear of the magazine. Additionally, for the body, they will have a unique feed tray, which will be shown on the screen. And some of them honestly say made in China on the base plate, so that's probably the first thing you're going to want to look for. Chinese magazines generally do not have an excess of markings, though some of them will have a made in China stamp on the bottom of the magazine. And last, the finished type of Chinese magazines can be blued or painted. Next up, we have Egyptian AK-47 magazines. Egyptian AK-47 magazines generally have a standard magazine body type with a spine on the rear, standard feed tray, and standard bottom plate with a five rib design. 
Some Egyptian magazines will say made in Egypt on the base plate, so that's the first thing you should look for. Egyptian AK mags do not have markings on the spine generally. And the main thing I look for are deep weld marks on the front of the magazine or on, along this front plate. And as for the finish, Egyptian AK magazines are generally painted black, and sometimes the paint sort of flakes away, revealing a brownish metal underneath, and that's one key indicator that it's an Egyptian magazine. Last up, we have rare magazines, which are Albanian and North Korean. Albanian and North Korean magazines will look very similar to Chinese magazines. Albanian AK-47 magazines are almost identical to Chinese magazines and are very hard to tell uh, which origin they're from unless you uh, know where you're getting them from. As for North Korean magazines, generally what you're going to want to look for is a symbol on the spine or somewhere on the magazine, which is a circle with a star in the middle, indicating that it is a North Korean magazine. Alright, so we're going to go over AK-74 magazines now in 5.45 by 39. The first thing that we'll look at, as always, is the material type. AK-74 magazines come in three main material types. Steel, which are generally Romanian and Polish. Polymer, which are generally Bulgarian, Russian, and Polish. And the last is a Bakelite type synthetic material, which is generally East German or Russian. Alrighty, first up, we'll start with Russian AK magazines. The first thing that we're going to look at is the material. Russian AK magazines generally come in a plastic polymer material or an orange bakelite material. The second thing that we're going to look at is the body of the magazine. Russian AK-74 magazines generally always have a marking in the bottom right-hand corner of the magazine, indicating which factory in Russia it was produced from. It can be either the Russian Shevitsk factory, which is a triangle with an arrow in the middle, the Russian Tula factory, which is a star, or for some of the longer magazines, you may find a shield with a star in the middle, which indicates it is produced in the Malat factory, which generally produce 45 round AK-74 magazines. On Plum and other black models, you will sometimes find a silver standing with an M in the middle or an O. They'll have silver or purple stampings along the back and the size of the magazine, whether they are polymer or bakelite. And last thing is finish type, which essentially is the same as material. You'll find Russian AK magazines in either polymer or a bakelite material. Next up, we have East German AK-74 magazines. East German AK-74 magazines are generally always made out of this orange bakelite material. They will have no factory markings on them except a mold number on the right hand side. No easiest way to distinguish these from Russian bakelite magazines is the Russian bakelite magazines generally always have a factory logo on them whereas the East German ones will just have a mold number for the magazine body and no factory marking. Some East German magazines that were brought in were converted to 223 and the easiest way to tell these is that they will have a bakelite body with a black paint painted over top of them. So if you find an AK-74 magazine that looks like this, but it's black painted, sometimes you can see some wear marks on them and you'll see orange underneath indicating that it was an AK-74 magazine converted to 223 for the American market. Next up is Polish AK-74 magazines. Polish AK-74 magazines can be either made out of steel or polymer. The body on a steel AK-74 magazine is standard, just like the 74 magazine from Romania. However, the Polish AK-74 magazine will not have that indentation near the top side plate, as shown on the pictures to the side. The Polish Palmer AK-74 magazines, the easiest way to tell the difference between these is the finish type and the markings. The markings they will have no factory mold number on the side, but they will have standard body mold numbers on the side here, usually indicated by a 1-1 or a 1-2. In addition, Polish AK-74 magazines, some of the later models have the caliber molded onto the side of the body, which is 5.45 by 39 millimeters, or for the more modern Polish barrel, it'll have 
223 slash 556 by 45 molded on the side here, depending on the market. Polish AK-74 polymer magazines have a different finish type from Russian and Bulgarian magazines. Theirs are a lot more matte and don't reflect as much light. So the best way to tell is to look at the mold numbers, see if there's a factory logo on the side, and see how much light it reflects in the lights above you. And if it's more of a matte and kind of textured feel, it is probably Polish. And if it is smoother and has a factory number, it is probably either Bulgarian or Russian. Next, we have Romanian AK-74 magazines. Romanian AK-74 magazines are all steel, and they have a very distinctive feed indentation on the feed side ramps on the top of the magazine. To the side here, you can see the differences between Polish and Romanian AK-74 magazines. And the main thing you're going to want to look for is the indentation on the side plate near the top of the magazine. Last up, we have Bulgarian AK-74 magazines. The material on Bulgarian AK-74 magazines is generally always a polymer slash plastic type material. The easiest way to identify a Bulgarian AK-74 magazine is to look on the right-hand side of the magazine near the bottom floor plate for markings. Just like on steel AK-47 magazines, you're going to want to look for two circles with a number inside them. Generally, you're going to find a circle 10, circle 21, or circle 25 on Bulgarian 74 magazines. Bulgarian AK-74 magazines come in a variety of colors. The most common ones are black, brown, and red. And the main way to identify those, again, is that marking on the bottom right-hand side of the magazine.